Welcome, my name is Colleen Tauke and I'm the sewing specialist here at Fonz & Porter. In this Quilting Quickly tutorial, I'm going to show you how to put together the units that go into blocks for the quilt called Spring Has Sprung. If you'd like to purchase this pattern, please visit our website. Okay, as you can see in the quilt behind me, we've got an oversized, really fun, modern looking quilt, but made with some very traditional colors and textures of fabrics. But by making them oversized, we can put it into that modern kind of category. So we've got large flowers, two different styles, and then we have a base of what looks like leaves and stems, and we're going to be putting together those components. Um, we're going to be working with, I've got a collection similar to the, the collection used in the quilt, so some pinks and reds and rose kind of colors. You can use some lights in there too, pops of yellow and um, some greens and blues are wonderful additions to the group. So from those two and a half inch strips, we're going to be creating the centers of our um, flower units. So we've got two different flower units we're going to be making. First we'll focus on the 25 patch, which is five by five, so 25 little blocks in the center. The one over here is four by four, so it's a 16 patch in the center. So let's work on this one first. And what we're going to be doing is putting together um, strip sets from those two and a half inch pre-cut strips. And you can see here I've got selections. This is a fun part. You go get to go and put five strips together, work in twos, put two together, then two more, then join the, the pairs and the last strip. So if you work a little at a time, you can make sure that you remember to get up, go to your iron, press your strips, make sure that those seams are pressed in one direction. Here you can see I press seams allowances in one direction. Remember to get up from the, the sewing machine. Don't just put five together right away because it's hard to get in with the nose of the iron to do that pressing. So if you do them in pairs, you'll be getting up, number one, moving, which is a good thing. And then you'll remember to get those seams all pressed up. So I've got five strip sets here of five each. And that way, or I've got four of them. One of them I actually decided instead of creating another, I'll just twist it around and lay it in so I wouldn't have to make so many strip sets. But go according to your instructions on how many strip sets to create that are five wide. Then you can stack those up. If I offset them by just a bit here, I can come in and I can cut my two and a half inch wide strips off of that and cut down through all of them at once. Now, if you're not comfortable doing that, cutting through so many layers, just do one or two at a time stacked until you get confident that you can cut down through all of them. You do need to make sure that the rotary blade is very sharp and new in your um, rotary cutter. So if it's time to change that out, do it now. Um, by layering these up, I'm offsetting those seam allowances just by that quarter inch so that they aren't all riding on top of each other. Then I can take my ruler and come in and I need a two and a half inch wide strip. I'm going to overcut that first one. I'm going to make it a little bit longer because my edges may not all be um, aligned perfectly. And I'm going to line up then and keep an eye on kind of a horizontal line on my ruler with the seam allowances. Then I can come in and cut down through a whole section at once and come back. And since they've been cut like that, they kind of stick together. So we've got one, two, and a half. I'm lining up again, looking back for that horizontal line also. And then I can cut perfectly a whole bunch of two and a half inch wide strips off my strip sets. And then I need to have enough so I can make my center of my block. And then we're just going to be, I'll lay it out kind of on a diagonal like the pieces there. You can arrange them, you'll need five of them total. But you're going to be linking those together, putting those together. You can flip them around and depending on where your colors pop in there. But Make sure you have five strips, join those together so you have that center piece. Now, once you get that center made, your 25 patch, you'll see that there's white triangles on the outer corners. Those are made in your directions. It'll tell you what size to cut um, your background squares. And then you're going to be cutting them diagonally once across the middle. And by doing this, you will create the four outer corners. I have two of them stacked on top of each other there. And those will give you the outside corners of your block. And you're going to put two on at a time. So you're going to put 
one here, and you make sure that you do the opposite corner. So go over here to put your pieces on. And then when you get those attached and pressed, you'll press your seam allowances. And you can see the shadowing here. The seam allowances are pressed toward the outside corner or the outside sheet piece. Then you're going to come in and do the opposite corners here. If you try to put two on next to each other, you'll find that you're going to have a problem here when it comes to pressing. So always remember, opposite corners first, press, and then add the last two. So then you'll have created the first of your flower units. So we'll set that one aside so you have those made for your quilt. This is the next one we're going to tackle. And it has a 16 patch or in the center. And this one's made just a little bit differently. You're going to cut, again, you're going to make strip sets, but you're going to make strip sets, and these are short because I already cut some off of them. I think they're cut um, 11 inches long, if I, if I remember correctly. You're going to make just pairs through these strips, and then you're going to cut pieces off again in the same manner you cut with the first part, two and a half inch wide pieces, and you're going to construct four patches. Once you get your four patches, to, um, together. You'll notice in your instructions, and if you look in the quilt, there are other four patches. That's why we're making four patches from this one. We're going to use some in our flower, and then you'll see there are four patches that fall as cornerstones within the quilt. So by making four patches here, then I can utilize the same strip sets for the centers of my flowers and our cornerstones. So you're going to twist and turn these into the uh, perfect alignment, and you're going to join two of them together, and then two more. And once you have two rows joined, then you can create the centerpiece of this block. I'm going to slide this to the side, and we're going to pretend that this part is already joined. Now, if you look at this, what we need to do is make the outer edge, that bright pink frame that goes around our 16 patch. Let me slide this over so it sits on top of the other. It's not so distracting. In order to get that kind of a snowball effect, what we're going to be doing is you're going to add, go to your directions, going to tell you to cut two rectangular pieces that are short. You're going to join those to the sides of your 16 patch. Then you're going to press the seams towards the outside edge. You're going to cut two more that are longer. And you're going to then join those to the top and bottom of this block. So the, basically, your 16 patch now is surrounded. Now, there's one more point, and it looks like it's a snowball effect, and it has these corners here. So I'm going to slide these out. I'm going to show you how to do that outer edge. I have some already attached. And what you do is, let me pick the right corner. Here we go. These are just squares added to the outside corner, and you mark them with a marking pen before you stitch them on, and you can um, mark corner to corner, a diagonal, and then go in and stitch. You're going to trim away the excess triangle underneath after you've gone and pressed that to make sure it fits perfectly. Now, one of these is trimmed, and I'll find it right there. This one is already trimmed, so we've got about a quarter inch seam allowance left behind. That will finish the corner, and you would do that on all four corners. Put the white square onto the corner. That one's trimmed also. Put the, the white squares out on the corners on all four sides. Stitch corner to corner, make a diagonal. Flip it out to make sure it replaces basically the piece underneath. Trim away the excess and you've made that kind of snowball effect to the corner. So we've got the second of our flowers done. Now what we need to do is create the base. And this is what we need you see underneath each flower. My color combination is a little bit different, but that gives you permission to have fun. <laughs> We've got a white triangle underneath here and two green triangles that represent the leaves of the flower and a stem. And you can choose the size of your rickrack and the directions will tell you how much of that you'll need. So in order to create that unit, you're going to start with a large white square of fabric, and the instructions will tell you how large this needs to be. Then you're going to cut it diagonally in both directions, which will yield a triangle that looks like this. The next thing you need to do is the instructions will tell you to start with a green square of fabric 
Again, you're going to cut diagonal across, and that will yield the two leaves that you need for your base. Now, these are stitched in place. The nice part about this one, I'll take, I have more than one layer underneath there, is that you do know your placement of how these get aligned, because as you lay these right sides together, the triangles here should match up. So match this end, stitch one side. You're going to have a triangle that goes off the end. That's good. The idea is that when you stitch from this end down, you should be one quarter inch from this edge here to where that makes this V. So this should be where you finish. That's what you're going for. Once you get done with that piece, you press it to the outside edge and do the same thing here. Aligning the triangle at this edge and stitch down to the end and flip it out. Once you have that all assembled, now it's the time to put the rickrack on. And in order to finish that off and get it placed right, you need to go in and just figure out your length. The ends are going to be caught in seam allowances, so we don't need to worry about anything there. So cut the length that you need for your block. And then, a little trick, instead of trying to pin a piece of rickrack in place, just use a little bit of glue stick. So you can buy these on our website. You can add just a little bit of the water-soluble gl um, glue stick to the backside of your rickrack and place it. If you're worried about placing it perfectly, fold your block in half, find the center, just do a little pinch, center your rickrack, and you know that you're going to need to stop at the, where the two green triangles intersect here. So then it's glued in place. Then you'll want to change your thread in your sewing machine to a matching thread so that you can top stitch down through um, your rickrack there so that you won't be able to see how it's attached. Once you have all of your bases created, then you're going to be joining either the flower with the pink surround to the base or um, this together. And that creates those big flower units within the quilt. All you have left at this point is sashing that you put down between and your cornerstones. Remember when we were making those four patches, this is the point where you use them. Spring has sprung. How much more fun can that be? If you'd like to see more of our Quilting Quickly tutorials, please visit our website. Thanks for joining me today.